He kneels for no one. He should look new McFarlane toys. DC Multiverse, Black Adam with cloak. Hailed as a slave who became champion, the mortal Teth Adam was bestowed the power of the gods, transforming into a fearsome, superpowered being at the utterance of a single magic word, Shazam. He freed his people from the king of Kandag before grief over the loss of his family turned to cold fury, and he was entombed for his vengeful actions. Nearly 5,000 years later, Black Adam is freed from his slumber and finds himself in a world he does not recognize. Now he must try to see himself not as Kandag's destroyer, but its savior before anybody around here starts yelling Shazam. How about the first thing we do is actually figure out how tall the figure stands. While I'm doing this as well, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarland Toys that did make this review possible by sending over the cloaked version of Black Adam that we could have a look at in this video. The figure, though, stands about six and a half inches in height, and that works out to be a figure that's roughly 16 and a half centimeters tall. For the very obvious comparison, let's slide over cloaked version of Black Adam and bring in the Black Adam that we've already had a look at. And while it looks like they are sharing the same body, hold on, let me just, let me just fix that. It seemed a little off there for a second. Well, it does, yes, seem like they are using the same body, torso, arms, and legs. It also looks as if they're probably using the same head. The cloaked version, for the obvious reasons, does have a cape and cloaked hood. And he also seems like he's been slightly painted differently, a little more tarnished in the gold areas. I'm guessing because the figure does have now a cape and a cloaked hood. And that's one of the reasons why, unfortunately, in this case, those lightning bolt attachments that went on the arms of the other Black Adam are omitted in this release. I guess it's the same amount of plastic. Though, in this case, the figure does still come in clue with a trading card, although it's not the same trading card as we've got before. I'm just going to bring in the one that we had already received in the other Black Adam. What's rather interesting is not only is lightning bolts coming out the torso, the little lightning bolt there on his chest, but this is actually an illustration or it would have been probably the case, maybe they took the original photo and they just digitally enhanced it. So it actually looked more like an animation cell rather than the actual real rock. Kind of interesting that they would have not just used this image and then just maybe colored his eyes and had the lightning bolts coming out of that. But they are at least to the credit of these cards different from one another. This one also says Black Adam with Black Adam down below redundant a bit and this one says black adam with cloak also from black adam being the movie flip around to the back and both of them are the exact same read up from one to the other it so happens i had to copy same thing i said for this one i said it again in this review as well and in both the cases of course obviously his real name teth adam that does, doesn't change at all doesn't change the figure also comes included with a display stand and i would say in this case it's good that it actually does come included with a display stand because the figure is very back heavy as you can probably guess it there's a lot of plastic on his cape and we're gonna talk a lot about that for a second but obviously yeah it's the same display stand i'm not gonna bring in the other one because well it's the exact same same singular peg same dc logo down below i really think for movie tie-ins it would be nice if they could actually have put the name of the movie on the top instead of always the go-to of dc Anyways, it's still a DC movie. We're going to put that to the side. Going ahead and picking up Black Adam. First of all, I will tell you, this figure does have problems standing. Primarily, it's because of the fact that there's so much more heavier plastic. It's not until you actually pick this figure up do you realize how much more of a weighted brick it is. Because there's so much dense plastic making up the majority of his cape here. As for bodies, as we've already discussed, the bodies are exactly the same to one another. Uh, the heads are actually a rather interesting thing because I I'd, I'd want to show you the heads here. Now, obviously, this is a good likeness of the rock already. Now, you will you may already notice that his irises are brown. And yet, the one for the black item that's cloaked, let me just peel this back just a little bit so you guys can see, his eyes are actually glowing. I think that's a nice touch. I thought it was actually just an optical illusion. When you look at it straight forward, what's strange about it, when you look at it straight forward, it looks like he does have brown eyes. And yet, when you turn them sideways... Again, isn't that a little strange? It looks like he has a cat eye. I'm hoping the camera's actually picking that up. Again, if that was intentional, job well done from McFarland's team to actually make it look as if the eyes are actually glowing. I think it's probably what the case is. There's a little reflection down at the bottom corner just below his pupil, and I think that's the thing that's reflecting the light. 
gives you a very strange effect. Now, in this case, also the head is attached to the hood. There's no way you can actually remove it. Whereas this one actually did have a completely open collar exposing the very muscular rock neck. This one actually doesn't have that. It has the collar right up to the top of his neck. And then the, the hood is actually already wrapped around his head. You can't, you can peel it back, but the only thing that you may run the risk of doing is actually splitting it right there. It is at least a softer plastic, but seeing as I already have this one, there's no real reason for me to want to rip this one off. I'm going to keep it contained inside the clo cloak hood. Bodies are exactly the same, although the colors have been changed here. All the aspects that were gold on the original Black Adam have been tarnished and darkened quite a lot. Things like, for example, his, his arm gauntlets. You notice the original one was more the metallic gold. This one here is very much more, well, again, tarnished or almost black gold. Also the same thing for his belt, the same thing also for this other hand, and the same can also be said for Black Adam's boots, a much dingier, darker, darker looking boot than the ones we got before. One thing that's also interesting about this Black Adam is the fact that the original one, you'll notice, remember, had closed fists. This one has does actually have open hands, and I haven't yet had the chance, chance to try this. I'm sure you probably could pop these hands off. I, I don't know if I really want to, maybe I'll leave them on, but I'm sure you probably could heat this up, pop pop the hands off. If you did want to say have one of these hands over there or vice versa, just because I haven't yet prepped this prior to the review of actually heating this in hot water, running a few passes with a hairdryer. I don't want to, I don't want to break this on camera. So yeah, you probably could take this off as I'm sure it's just a simple swap of the two pegs and probably identical in peg diameters anyways. But other than that, I mean, like the bodies are identical and they seem to be the same. Even like the lightning bolt is a little bit more darker of a yellow. It's not as bright in the middle here. And it's probably going to be the case with all of the versions of, of Cloat's Black Adam. That the colors of here yellow are going to be a lot darker than the colors we got in the original version. The thing that really does, again, separate this figure is the sense that it does have, of course, the hood. And it does have this big cape. The cape... I mean, just to hold these two figures in my hand right now, I notice right away this has a lot more weight to it. And the cape has very little in the way of give to it. It does have some cool scroll work that they've painted in gold here on the side. It runs all the way down the side and along the bottom here of the cape. And it's come, got some interesting layers to it, but it's just a big hunk of, of molded plastic. There's no, the, very little give is only on the side here, but it is a very chunky bit of plastic. It does add for a lot, a lot of extra weight here on Black Adam that you can already see as I'm just putting the figure down, his back just wants to pull him down as if just a, a strong force of gravity is just sucking down Black Adam. For the articulation here on the figure though, his head is gonna be the exact, well, all of it is really gonna be the exact same as the Black Adam we looked at before. So his head can actually rotate two ways. You can rotate it this way while holding still the, the hood, or you, what you can also do is rotate the head just on the inside. So if you want to have the head kind of slightly more lower down on the hood, then you can do that also as well. But in both the cases, it's on a ball joint. You can kind of move it back. Well, I mean, you can rotate it almost all the way around. Yeah, see, there you go. You can rotate it all the way around. It is, again, it's separate from the rest of the cape, but it's not one that's separate from the rest of the head. I mean, obviously, you're going to rip that off if you ever wanted to remove that. Uh, the cape, though being such a big bulky bit of plastic, still allows the figure to have an upper torso ball joint. There's still a lower torso ball joint that's actually just below the belt area. And like the one we looked at before already, the arms also do come out at a 90 degree angle bend. You can take the arms and rotate them somewhat, somewhat all the way around. But being the fact that the side of the collar, the side of the cape, jets so far out from the shoulders, it's going to cause a little bit more problems when it comes to rotating his arms all the way around. So you're going to kind of be able to move it back this way, and obviously you're going to be able to move it to about there. Any bit be between here and here, you're going to have to fight with it. Nobody really wants to fight with a pair of arms. The bicep does have a swivel. There's a double hinge on the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around, and you can also hinge them back and forth. Legs split also the same way as before. There's a ratcheted joint on the inside. And again, like really nice texturing done to this body. I know we sort of just, I didn't want to really glaze over this review because I, I know for most of it, I really had the talking points when we had a look at this original Black Adam. But again, like all the work that they put into sculpting the costuming on this version gets also obviously carried over to this figure as well. Nothing different in that department. As for the rest of the articulation, the legs do go forward. You can go back with them as well. There's a mild swivel at the top of the thigh. A double hinge on the knee. There's no articulation here for the top of the boot. Now, when it comes to the feet, I don't know why for this one I've noticed this more. The feet, this part here is all soft plastic. Here, here, here. Well, it's harder up the top. It's softer down below. 
For some reason as well, this doesn't help the cause of this figure. If you bring the foot forward, this part of the rubbery plastic of the guard, it always seems to want to be pushing the foot down. Even when I put it down, I want to kind of lean him forward to compensate for the fact there's so much more weight down at the back here. I always feel like I'm fighting against these guards. Still, though, the figure does have an ankle pivot, and there's some decent toe articulation as well. And, of course, as Monch mentioned, the figure does have foot holes on the bottoms of his feet. And I would definitely encourage, in a case like this, use the foot pegs. Because, again, putting the figure down, you know what, I'm going to do it. Being the fact that the figure has so much weight working behind him and working really against his favor of actually standing him properly, I would definitely use a display stand. Even then, like just to put him on the display stand, you can see just how the cape wants to pull him back like this. Really a case, though, of picking your poison as to which black item you prefer. I mean, I'm sure if you were a big fan of The Rock and you like the look of black item, you're probably more inclined to pick up both anyways. Why am I having such a tough time getting now this guy to stand? As I did say, though, I mean, if you if you were a big fan of the costume and you liked the look of Black Adam and thought the McFarlane toys did do a good job on the figure, then you're probably going to be getting both anyways. One thing I do like about it is it's not just the case where they took this figure and they put a cape on him and they put a hood. And while some may say that looking at the figure, it does, obviously, it looks like it's the identical figure. It is, but at least they actually tarnished the areas that are gold. So it does feel like, or looks like, cosmetically, he's a little bit different of a figure than just the figure again with a cape and cloak on top. On paper, sure, it's the same Black Adam as we've already gotten. This is a case where Malibu Stacey's been re-released simply just with a new hat that's added on her head. That's a Simpsons reference, by the way. It was an episode with Malibu Stacey, and they just... Lisa Lionheart, remember? Lisa designed a doll, and they just ultimately re-released a new Malibu Stacey that came in clue with a hat, and that's kind of a running gag whenever a figure has already gotten a release and he just gets or she gets re-released with a new accessory and simpsons it's malibu stacy even though yeah this is just a case where it's the same figure with a now new cape and hood it works really well with this figure and it could not have worked by being a, a separate accessory to come and with the other black adam there's no way you'd be able to fit that over top of his head and it would have not sat properly having this already permanently or not somewhat somewhat permanently molded to the figure where you wouldn't be able to take it off gives you at least a finished looking black adam without having the fuss of having to do it yourself it's also painted differently too so while you are putting this one on the shelf along with the other black adam having the colors at least vary from one to the other with the more tarnished gold being represented on this one again even helps more so to make it look like they're not the exact same figure from one to the other now unfortunately this one doesn't come in clue with the lightning bolts although being that i like the look of him with the actual cape and cloak it's not my favorite i think i still like the other one a little bit more i think i'm actually going to use the lightning bolts that came in clue with the other black adam the unhooded Black Adam. I'm going to use actually the lightning bolts with this figure instead. Another way I can separate the two figures from one to the other. And I also mentioned already, this one also has the open hands. The other Black Adam had closed fists. So there, there, there's enough changes made. It's not a Malibu Stacy case with a brand new hat. There's enough changes here that I think warrant picking up both the figures. Plus as well, if you already like the head sculpt and the, and the way they've actually done the Black Adam the first time before, I don't think it's all that much to ask to pick up a figure again at least if you're getting one that comes with a cloak and a hood. Again, a big thank you to the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the Black Adam cloaked version that we could have a look at in this video. Which of the two Black Adams do you actually prefer more? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit it with a like. If you're loving the content you're seeing and certainly want to stick around for more, because we are going to be looking at, by the way, the rest of the Black Adam figure wave. If you want to make sure that you're not missing out on that, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the bell notification. Because while we, again, have wrapped up the review for Cloaked Black Adam, there's definitely going to be the rest of the wave still coming your way in the not-so-distant future. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.